Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ansel Blaze Isaac Jr. and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the finale of the President's Awards for Innovation and Service Excellence in the Public Sector. Now, before we begin, please know that all COVID-19 protocols were observed during the filming of this episode. The Inter-American Development Bank, the IDB, under the distinguished patronage of Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, ORTT President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, launched a competitive call for all applicants in the prestigious President's Awards for Service Excellence and Innovation in the Public Sector, or as we refer to it, Praise for Public Sector. Now, this is the fourth year of the competition, which was successfully held in 2018. All right, the competition has been fierce, but the judges made their evaluations. And tonight, we reveal the winner of the award for service excellence, as well as innovation. And let's not forget the People's Choice Awards. We had an outstanding response for these awards and thank you, the viewing public, for casting your votes. Friends, I'd now like to welcome uh, Karina Coburn. She's actually the IDB Group Country Representative for Trinidad and Tobago. Karina, how are you today? I'm feeling good, thank you. You you look like you're feeling good. I like the colors and the earring, you know, everything just come together. I appreciate that. Yes, and I, I <laughs> do mean it, eh? I do mean it. It's, thank you, please. Excellent. You're very welcome. Now, Karina, let's get down to business. Um, this is the fourth year for the praise of the praise for the public sector. Yes. And um, in terms of IDB sponsoring this event, what, uh, what, 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 what made IDB in terms of sponsoring this event? What made you guys sponsor it? We think that the public sector in Trinidad and Tobago is excelling in many ways. Uh, perhaps this excellence was not appreciated or um, given sufficient recognition. And the aim of praise is to reflect to the public sector how much we appreciate them, how, how much we, we, we see the effort that they're making to deliver a high quality standard of service to the public um, that they serve and to make sure that the public can feel comfortable accessing the, the services of government. And, and this is something that, I mean, we want in our country. We want to raise the level of service and the IDB is helping us do this um, as a matter of fact. Now, I want to ask you, how do you feel about tonight's finalists though? I think we have an excellent group of finalists. Um, every year we are, we are surprised, we are impressed. The, the judges always feel that there's something new that they haven't heard about before. And this year was no different. So we have, we have seen finalists from all across the public sector, from all across the length and breadth of the country. And we think that Trinidadians and Tobagonians can feel absolutely proud and pleased with the efforts that they'll see before them in this event. I, I also think that way. And, and I want to ask you another question. Uh, this one is pertaining to the IDB. Um, what can we expect to see from the IDB working with the public sector in Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, yeah, so the public sector is actually our main counterpart in the country. We do work with the private sector. We work with large private sector entities and micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. But with the public sector, we support the government's priorities over a, a three to five year period. We're just about to begin a new country strategy. And we have always seen that the, the standard of professionalism in the public sector is, is significant. I would say it compares well with the rest of the Caribbean and Latin America. And the purpose of us being here in this event is to show appreciation and acknowledge the efforts of public servants who are working often within significant constraints. Yes. Now, who would you like to acknowledge for making the uh, Praise for Public Sector great initiative? First, I, I have to acknowledge Her Excellency President Paula May Weeks, who continues to patronize this event year after year. Um, she has been a great champion for the public sector and uh, um, has has appreciated the presentations that have been made in the judging process. 
I want to acknowledge the judges. Uh, most, most of the time when we reach out to, to persons to join the judging panel, they're very pleased and honored to be a part of it. Uh, they take significant personal time to review the submissions and they carefully peruse what has been submitted and ask very pointed questions of the uh, applicants. So I want to thank the judges for their time and, and efforts to, to bring this event to fruition. Any last words? I mean, we've shared so many words, but any last words um, before we meet the judges and the finalists? I can't wait to meet the winners. I think it's always important to identify excellence, to, to appreciate it, to acknowledge it, to congratulate those who have done well. And uh, um, they are going to be an example and an inspiration for those who will apply in years to come. It will be. It will be. Karina, it has been certainly a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Folks, we'll be right back with praise for the public sector. But before that, let's hear a little bit more about the IDB. At the Inter-American Development Bank in Trinidad and Tobago, we are proud to have a diverse team of professionals representing various disciplines and nationalities who work collaboratively with local stakeholders to improve the lives of citizens in TNT. The IDB Group consists of three windows. IDB Lab, which supports the development of innovative, micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. IDB Invest, which provides loans to larger private sector entities for development initiatives. And IDB, which engages with the government to implement strategic priorities by providing loans, technical assistance, research, and advice. Please take the time to learn more about our work, jobs at the IDB Group, events, and financing opportunities by following at CN Coburn Rep TT on social media. Now, the IDB's President's Awards for Innovation and Service Excellence is held under the distinguished patronage of the President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. We now welcome Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, ORTT, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Good evening. And I trust it's not too early to say season's greetings to you all. I never cease to be amazed at the pockets of excellence that exist within the public service. Each iteration of the President's Awards for Service Excellence and Innovation in the Public Sector provides a welcome window into the wealth of talent, commitment, and promise resident within the walls of our nation's institutions. Year after year, my fellow judges and I are bowled over by the exemplary work and inventive plans that are conceptualized, engineered, and ushered into being by professionals hailing from all across the sector, childcare workers, members of the protective forces, health practitioners, engineers, educators, financial regulators, and regular clerks, and many more. They represent the very best our nation has to offer. This evening, we recognize and celebrate the eight finalists who rose to the occasion and ably demonstrated their passion and capacity to revolutionize the public service delivery. Anyone can have a good idea, but it takes boundless vision, creativity, teamwork, determination, and grit to translate those ideas into reality. The awards are judged by separate panels in two categories service excellence, and innovation. And I thank my fellow adjudicators for their keenness and commitment to the task. As the only common member of the judging panels, I can vouch that all of the judges were highly impressed, not only by the caliber of submissions, but also the enthusiasm, pride, and competence of the presenters. While judging took place virtually, that in no way diminished the energy, dedication, and clarity of the candidates, nor did it take away from the potency of their contributions. All participants understood the assignment set by the long arm of COVID-19, adapt or die. At the inaugural awards in 2018, I made mention of the leaps and bounds made by the country of Estonia in digitalizing most of its public sector. Four years later, our institutions are on that very trajectory, 
heeding the imperative of change, albeit in response to the challenges thrown up by the pandemic. The necessity for continuity in the delivery of public services, in spite of the onerous restrictions, forced many government offices to bite the bullet and embrace digitalization and technology after years of lethargy and thumb twiddling, a case of better late than never. While on the one hand, COVID-19 slowed down and stymied many government processes, on the other, it amplified and sped up the pace of transformation in service delivery. Some projects already underway or in the pipeline when COVID struck were modified and adjusted to ensure timely availability to the general public. Other measures were new, specifically developed to counter the disruptive effect of the pandemic on public offices. A common thread throughout the submissions was the recognition that customers could only be served effectively by service providers prepared to abandon some of the traditional methods and practices and embrace the technological advances of the 21st century. That the public service bridges the gap between state and citizen and should therefore be responsive, flexible and accessible, especially in times of crisis, was clearly grasped by all our entrants. They surveyed their environment, identified gaps and shortfalls, and responded by conceptualizing and then concretizing their action plans. Along the way, they encountered challenges, logistical, financial, physical, but soldiered on, blazing a trail of excellence across their respective fields. Long hours, sleepless nights, and careful strategizing resulted in impressive projects, proof that within the ranks of the public service, there are individuals prepared and capable to breathe new life into the public service machinery. This competition has empowered and invigorated public officers to go well beyond the call of duty, meeting and exceeding the expectations of their customers, as well as injecting the citizenry with a healthy dose of optimism and confidence in their potential and outlook of their public bodies. The President's Awards for Service Excellence and Innovation in the Public Sector, while so named, is really the brainchild of the Inter-American Development Bank, and I thank them for their continued support of Trinidad and Tobago's public institutions and governance. It is my hope, and I dare say the goal of these awards, that the quality of the contributions become the norm across the public sector. Each successive year sees bigger and better submissions from public servants determined to equal or outstrip the accomplishments of their peers. This bodes well for the future of the public service. I commend all entrants and finalists for their diligence and commitment to public life and congratulate the winners shortly to be announced. Keep leading the march of progress within your various sectors, hewing a clear path for others to discern and follow and continue to improve and refine your areas of service excellence and innovation. Former American President Woodrow Wilson could well have been offering words of encouragement to our public servants when he said, You are not here merely to make a living. You are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world, and you impoverish yourselves if you forget the errand. I thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this year's competition was fierce. After a rigorous judging process, finalists for each category emerged out of a very competitive pool of applications. Congratulations to all who submitted. We applaud each and every one of the applicants and, of course, the applications received for their dedication to advancing the public sector in service excellence and innovation. We want to remind the viewing public that the voting is closed for the People's Choice Awards, but stay tuned as we'll be announcing all the winners tonight. Along with Her Excellency, we want to once again thank our judging panel who were tasked with making the hard choice of this year's 2021 Service Excellence Award. Now, our judges for Service Excellence were as follows. Arlene McComey, Brian Frontin, George Leacock, and Lisa Maria Alexander. I'd now like to invite one of our esteemed judges, Mrs. Arlene McComey, to the stage to present the first two certificates to our Service Excellence finalists. And the finalists are 
in alphabetical order. Airports Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Their project focused on outfitting the airports to adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic to reinforce safe travel. Civilian Conservation Corps. They shifted their entire program online and simultaneously retrofitted their in-person spaces to accommodate COVID-19 restrictions. Thank you, Mrs. McComey. I now invite Mr. George Leacock to present the next two certificates in our service excellence category. Eastern Regional Health Authority, who led an agency-wide reformulation and mobilization of resources for national and regional COVID-19 responses. The Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service, they overhauled their daily operating procedures to incorporate COVID-19 protocols and sensitized both their internal and external stakeholders about how they manage their COVID-19 response. Thank you, Mr. Leacock. And I now invite Ms. Lisa Maria Alexander to present the last certificate in our service excellence category. Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program, YTEP Limited, who launched its online training platform. Thank you, Mrs. McComey, Mr. Leacock, and Ms. Alexander. The decision for the Innovation Awards wasn't any easier. There was stiff competition, and again, we want to congratulate all of our applicants. Sitting on the Innovation Judging Panel, along with Her Excellency, were Andre Bello, Camille Selvon Abrahams, Eva Mitchell, and Kiran Maturu Mohammed. I would like to invite Ms. Eva Mitchell to the stage to present the first two certificates to the Innovation finalists. In alphabetical order, the finalists are the Gender and Child Affairs Division. This year, they created an online training program to encourage citizens to provide a higher level of safety and protection to the nation's children. The National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago Limited. Their innovations in outsourcing human resources and technical capacities are providing services across the world. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. I now invite Mr. Kiran Mathul Mohammed to present the next two certificates to our innovation finalists. Southwest Regional Health Authority, who launched its Culinary Medicine Food Park project in collaboration with the Ministry of Health. And the Community Flood Early Warning System Partnership, which is a collaboration with the Water Resource Agency of WASA and other state agencies to bring an innovative solution to recognize and mitigate the effects of flooding across the country. Friends, congratulations to all of our finalists. And now one of the highlights for tonight, the judge's choice for service excellence. Please welcome back Karina on stage to present the overall winner of the Service Excellence Award. And the winner of the Service Excellence Award is the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service. Well, the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service is an arm of the criminal justice system. We manage a total of 3,600 inmates throughout Trinidad and Tobago. In January of 2020, we got, got word that COVID is close by. We decided to move forward and develop sanitizing station, sensitize the inmates so that they will have a better idea of what is coming and treat for it. We were able to build and outfit a prison at the Claxton Bay Correction Facility in four days and have it occupied with COVID-19 inmates. When we realize that what, what, um, the pandemic is going to hit Trinidad and Trinidad is going to go into a, a state of emergency, what we did, we started to cultivate 91 acres at the maximum security prison. And having a, a prison population to feed and having 36 hung, hungry inmates, and we were able to, to push that to a large extent. Most of our services went online. We realized that visits stopped in the prison. So that human link was lacking. We went online, we had visit online. And not only visit we did online, we allow the inmates' relatives to use the commissary system by making payments online so inmates can go to the commissary and purchase um, snacks for their survival and all that sort of thing. We, have, we now have a system where uh, inmates can contact their lawyers and have conversation with their lawyers through the Zoom platform. They sit in the comfort of the prison and they have their matters heard. 
really and truly, the criminal justice system is totally linked to the online platform and the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service made that happen. I'd like to say a special congratulations to the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service uh, on winning this auspicious award. Um, so congratulations to, to your team, the Prison Services team. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are truly excited about this today. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is something to be excited about because, I mean, it's no, it's no secret that you all have had some challenges in the past few, in the past few weeks, yes. past few days. Yes. And um, I would like to extend my personal condolences on, on behalf of, of the media to your fallen comrades. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank so this is, this is, a, this is a, a light, a little light shining yes. in, in that darkness. So, so tell me something, what does this award mean for your organization? This award uh, in these challenging times is the national community saying, I see you. Yes. I see you to the staff of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service who continue to be committed to the task at hand in spite of the challenges that we face today. And we, we are really, really excited and appreciative. This is truly motivating for us to continue. It is, it is. And I mean, you know, the, 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 the prison services has passed through so many challenges yes. from the public persona uh, of a prison officer to, to the inmates you all have to deal with. Um, and now, you know, these challenges that face you all head on, yes. almost like if as a target on your back. Yes. And, and you guys are coming out and serving the community and, serving. and doing what you have to do. Yes. So congratulations and, and keep it strong. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, tell me something. Would you encourage other agencies to, to participate in praise? Certainly. I think the, the whole praise concept is an excellent concept. It, it's, it is supported by research. It provides an opportunity to recognize people for their hard work, but it also provides an opportunity for, for members of the public, members of the public service, to continue to be innovative in their daily operations. Sometimes there are backlogs in certain areas. Now we have this opportunity to meet on a strategic level and plan how are we going to, ch and, and when you execute, yeah. you have an opportunity now to enter into competitions like this and be awarded for your hard work. So I think it's, it is a twofold type of thing. I think it's excellent. So we just want to thank the, Her Excellency and her team for that brilliant idea. And I think it will be done better for the public service of Trinidad and Tobago. It will be. And, and it also, um, it will encourage people to see, you know, yes. the, the, the peop these people are working. Yes. They're working and they're trying to better the service and by extension, the, the national service. Yes. So, so congratulations on that. And congratulations again to you and your team. This is a light in, in these dark days for the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Services. Thank you so much. So keep on doing the great work. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And now for the other highlight of tonight, the judge's choice for innovation. And the winner of the Innovation Award is the Community Flood Early Warning System Partnership. <laughs> CFUSE project is actually a project that was designed to enhance Trinidad and Tobago's capacity to actually detect floods and it's all geared towards reducing the effect of floods on communities. Flooding in Trinidad and Tobago is a major cause of concern. At least one area is inundated every year or impacted by floods every year. So the CFUSE project has a number of components, one of which is the enhancement or the upgrading of our monitoring systems, both our rainfall, stream flow, and flood monitoring systems. And one of the key things about it is that we have put in real-time gauges. So we are better able to detect when we do have an incident of flood. Another component of the project is the data and information portal, which is a portal that's actually used to be able to disseminate this information or share this information with our partners. If there is a threat of a flood, this notification portal actually has triggers. So it, it does alarm and messages are sent to the, our different partners via both email and also SMS messenger. An additional component of the project is the CFUSE app. The CFUSE app is a mobile app that would have been developed to collect information at the level of the community 
also the community can provide this information to first responders so they are better able to respond whereby they are allowed to collect the information on the ground as the flood is occurring it empowers the community to respond to the impacts of flooding and to reduce the impact of flooding within their communities to ensure the protection of lives and livelihoods we'd like to congratulate the community flood early warning system partnership on winning this auspicious award this evening congratulations to you and your team Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and from what I'm hearing, it's a, it's a team, it's an amalgamation of, of, of agencies that, that have come together to, to, to make this partnership. Yes, it is. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so it is a, a collaboration between the Water Resources Agency of, of WASA, um, the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, the Trinidad and Tobago Red Cross, the drainage division, right, of the Ministry of Works and Transport, and also the ODPM. Now, I mean, with so many hands in the pot, mm -hmm. um, getting it right and making everybody move in one direction with one purpose, using one strategy, what does this mean for that organization of people? Okay, so having won this award, um, it has given us a lot of promotion about the project, definitely. And we are given new life in terms of moving forward in order to be able to solve flooding at the community level within Trinidad and Tobago. This is excellent. It's, it's a noble cause because too many times we see flooding and there's, there's repeated flooding. Right. And then sometimes you see places people say, he had never flooded in 25 years. Right. I've never seen here flood before. So people would need help. Yes, people definitely. People would need your, your organization even definitely. more now. And one of the key things I should mention about this project is that we are doing it at a community level. And when I say so, the response is coming from the community. Right. So the communities will be involved in terms of actually designing their plans, right? Yes, of course, we are giving them that support, but the communities would be involved in terms of doing it at the community level, designing their plans and being able to respond so we are better able to, re to assist them. To assist and serve. Yes, so definitely. Now, let me ask you this. Would you encourage other state agencies to be part of this? Of course, definitely. I would encourage other state agencies to be a part of this. Um, reason being is that there are a lot of good projects that are undertaken by a number of different state agencies. There's a lot of innovation. There are a lot of bright people. And a lot of the times they need the promotion to be able to get their projects out there. So definitely, yes. Well, well, you have done well right. by, by bringing forward and bringing in all these people. Right. Uh, you and your team, I should say. So right. again, congratulations. Job well done. Thank and you. we're looking forward to see more from you guys in the future. Yes, definitely. Yeah? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. want to say congratulations to the finalists in the service excellence category and the innovation category as well. So now we've reached the People's Choice Awards. In its inaugural virtual debut in 2020, we opened the People's Choice Awards to a much wider audience and allowed you, the viewing public, to let us know who you thought deserved the People's Choice Award for service excellence and innovation. Now, the response was really astounding. We got thousands of responses, and it is my pleasure to hand you over to Karel Clark, Special Projects Operations Consultant and Chair of the Praise Committee for the award of the people's choice. Thank you, Blaze. I'm here with one of our esteemed judges from the service excellence category, Brian Frontin, who will present the people's choice. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, girl. Can't wait to see who the people have chosen for this category. Neither can I. And the winner of the people's choice service excellence is Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program, YTEP Limited. Congratulations! And how do you feel to win this award? I want to thank the public for voting on this project. Without their support, we would not have been able to do it. Congratulations again to the winner of the People's Choice for Service Excellence. And now, the People's Choice Award for Innovation. I am here with one of our esteemed judges from the innovation category, Camille Selvan Abrams, who will present this year's People's Choice Award. Welcome, Camille. 
Thank you. It's an honor to be here and an honor to be a judge. I'm wishing everyone involved a great opportunity to win. And thank you for sharing this with us. And now, the winner of the People's Choice in Innovation, the Gender and Child Affairs Division. Congratulations, and how do you feel to win this award? I would honestly like to thank the public for voting for us for this award, and we could not have done it without the public. Congratulations again to the winner of the People's Choice in Innovation. On behalf of the Inter-American Development Bank, I'd like to thank everyone who's helped to make this year's President's Awards for Innovation and Service Excellence in the public sector such a resounding success. First, I'd like to thank Her Excellency, Paula May Weeks, ORTT, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and her office for her continued patronage and belief in the value of these awards. Thank you to our esteemed judges for your time, care, and consideration of each one of this year's finalists. Thank you to all of the public sector entities who submitted applications this year, and most especially to tonight's finalists for your passion for your work and your belief in service to improving the lives of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you to the IDB Praise for the Public Sector Planning Committee and all of the staff at the IDB for your tireless work and commitment to the purpose of these awards. To our partners, particularly iCreate Events, NH Productions, Guardian Media Limited and Amanda Burgo, thank you for helping to make these awards a success. Finally, I'd like to thank the people of Trinidad and Tobago. These awards exist to honor the public sector organizations who strive to innovate and improve their work in pursuit of improving and developing Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you for supporting the spirit of these awards and the people of the public sector. Thank you, Karel, and congratulations to the winners of the People's Choice. And thank you, Alex, for that vote of thanks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our night. Don't forget to nominate your favorite public sector project for next year's Praise for the Public Sector. Stay safe, my friends, and have a great night.